Sean, give me an adjective. <laughs> Lines one to six. Ambitious. Ambitious. Not insane. I guess that's an M. Okay, now, is, and you're going to get the actual questions coming up here in a little bit. Is it important if the, that these match up with the same ones? No, but you're still coming up with ideas, thoughts, and what adjectives that would be used to describe her. And I'd say absolutely all of those would, 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 would merit consideration. Um, what do you think about number two? Shift in point of view, going from first person to third, back to first. What, what are we trying to do? With it the has the um, effect of distinguishing her present self from her past self. Okay. So distinguish present from past. And not meaning time, but meaning self. Um, literary term for that in some ways? Not like necessarily the distinguishment, but the fact that you're going in the past. Flashback. Yeah, flashback. I think that's vocabulous number five. It'll be, it'll be there. It'll be there. There's a lot of E terms. Number four, that's a lot of E's. Hopefully not great. Well, we'll see. Anything else? So that separation, past, present. Let's do it along with that. It gives a context to the way you think about the past. Okay. Um, so provides context. And, and in some ways, like what, besides age, and I think this would kind of go along with, you know, subject matter she's about to go into. Besides age, what would be things that would distinguish her from her past self to her present self? So besides simply going younger or older, wisdom. Okay, um, and not saying that, and we describe, you know, I assume you mean as old as an adult wise. Yeah. yeah. We and I'm not going. Therefore, she can't be intelligent because we put that up here. I'm not saying she's not smart, but if she's not wise, experience. Exper well, well, inexperience. Inexperience. Oh, you know, okay. naive. Yeah. That kind of stuff would be some things that you could be separating from. So. You might have someone who's wise. You might have someone who is naive. Those could certainly be some things. Um, we're going to get to three and four. I want to skip down to five because it talks about that shift. So is number five, would you say your answer is very similar to what we kind of did here with distinguishing present from past, you know, wise from naive, or do you have something else of a shift going on because that's happening, you know, from that first paragraph to that second one? Um, I said that... Okay, so um, let's go with what you said. Background to like the main issue at hand. Okay. Anything else for five? What is, uh, tell me what is the main topic? Like her struggles with the societal image of women at the time. Okay. So, society's portrayal of women. All right. She's saying stuff about my handwriting. All right, number three was some highlighting, irony, understatement. <coughs> what were you looking at? Statements, lines where you would see some irony, understatement, or maybe an element of humor. Articles have to be about something. Do they now?
Sean, remember that for future TWAs. We have to be about something. On December the 19th, which is a Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, we skipped three and four, but now we're back to three. We'll get the four. What else? Okay, uh, which line were you looking at? Um, she was intensely sympathetic. She was immensely charming. She was, okay. she was terribly unselfish. So, like around 15, mm -hmm. 16 uh, Not disagreeing. Why? Because I don't think that's one that people would necessarily think of as being ironic or understatement because as much. She's describing, like in later lines, she's describing that she has to kill this quote unquote pure. Okay. Image of society of women in society because it is it's not helping her. It's actually very demeaning to So I have to kill something that is supposed to be so wonderful. That would be ironic, yeah. Um, and, and some folks might argue the fact that um, you're going from, you know, hey, this is the angel in the house. What's the word that she tends to use to describe her or to describe yeah, it? Yeah. You know, it's a phantom, um, kind of ironic, where the angel tends to have a positive connotation. Phantom probably has a little bit more of a negative connotation. You have a female writer who is killing this female portrayal. Um, initially, some people might be taken aback by that or surprised by that, but it's the female, you know, killing this female identity as opposed to, like, maybe a male identity. Anything else? Anything Mm -hmm. Not really something you'd think that you'd have to do yeah. if you're going to review a book. Any understatement in that opening paragraph, lines one to six? She had only needs that. That's all it took, back and forth, back and forth. Um, what does she mean by 10 o'clock to one? In a sense, is she going back and forth for three hours, or is there something else? Because there's something else. <laughs> okay. um, like when you write, so it'll be, like, um, since it's like if you look at a clock thing here, the one's here, so she's basically going. It's the motion, it's the direction. So when you take your first drive, it's like 10 to 2 now. It used to be 9 to 3. Okay. No, it's about 10 to 2, but like, rather than the the uh, I just Well, I remember specifically in third grade, Mrs. Hendricks going, take your paper, this is what we had to write in cursive, and she wanted it slanted. So that your letters would have like a slant to it, but if you were going to slant it, you're kind of going or seven direction, I guess. <laughs> ten going up to one o'clock a little bit. So yeah, normally you would think ten to two, nine to three, um, but you're kind of getting that little bit of, of the upward slant. Um, I don't know if this would be an example of understanding, but to tell you my story it is a simple one. Okay. Um, because really, like up here, it's fairly simple, but when you get down here. It becomes much more complex. Yeah. Okay, Allie, we're coming to number four now. Boom, we're here. How does the author focus her second paragraph? What's the dominant literary technique that holds the paragraph? So this part first, like what, what's the main issue that we're looking at? And I know we've kind of already started to state this, but subject matter. Phantom of society. Phantom, the portrayal of women. <laughs> From a literary technique standpoint, what's holding that paragraph primarily together? Extended metaphor, Extended metaphor being the phantom itself. No issues there. Like, like having this phantom getting like lifelike. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, picking up the ink blot, throwing it. You. Um, you could go apostrophe. 
you know, talking to someone who's not there. Well, and that's where, like, with, with personification, you'll get these debates where people will go, I think we already talked about this, like the anthropomorphism, you know, because there's, some people agree it's personification, some won't. Angel in the house is represented as a phantom because so why not? You're so you, oh, Sean. You're saying this seems like a good thing, but that term doesn't. So that yes. word choice. So um, the phantom juxtaposes, contradicts that whole ain't. Okay. Uh, what do phantoms do? Haunt. So this isn't Casper the Friendly Ghost kind of phantom. It's like Danny Phantom. Um, Kobe, I think when we're highlighting, you mentioned like lines 15 to 18. Yeah. Uh, what'd you do for syntax for those, since you already kind of... Um, I said it serves to not only describe the phantom, but describes the stereotype. Okay, if we were to, and I know this isn't the question, if we were to characterize the syntax for 15 to 18, that she was, you know, part, um, what could we say about those lines in general? If we were to characterize or identify the type of syntax, it could be anaphora, anaphora, parallel syntax, repetition, all of those things would, would certainly work. Notice we're using literary terms now. Yay. This is so much better than August was. I was like pulling teeth talking to you guys. No, no. We're much better now. Yeah, I know. Um, all right, now, so why, what's the effect now of that anaphora? I forget what you said already. No um, memory. I said it, um, it represents, it describes a stereotype. Okay. Um, why go in that, you're right, there's absolutely no argument that it's describing the stereotype. Why use that repetition to, to get that? point across because I think describing like the personality the personalities like as they were and plus that she says that she was immensely charming I think that kind of symbolizes the fact that she has since like strived to overcome the stereotype, stereotype I guess okay so you're putting emphasis on the past tense like she was but yeah. that's no longer who a woman necessarily needs to be right or is expected to be okay i think it's repeated so many times because it's like all of the other men and people in society saying that so like it's supposed to just give weight to the words okay um having it repeated yeah. emphasize that this like there wasn't like, one person who had this belief yeah it's like like the universal, not not a hundred percent meaning universal, but the widespread yeah. belief. Okay. So emphasizes the widespread belief. Okay. Um, obviously, number eight, we don't have which of the following best describes what the angel symbolizes, and we've kind of already said this, but the angel would symbolize. Probably the widespread belief we would basically yeah. kind of take from number seven um, and bring it down here to number eight. About attitude. We're going to give an attitude in like one or two words. Uh, disdainful. Disdainful. I said respectful. Respectful. Those are two pretty different things. Um, Kobe, why are you going disdainful? Because um, I didn't really see it as, um, as a respectful because it's like she's talking about, oh my gosh, she's immensely trying, blah, 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 and then a couple lines down, I killed her hard. She died hard. Like, she, why would you kill something that is essentially pure if you want to talk about it even in a sarcastic or disdainful way? No, but that's not in the. 
Yeah, so we're looking at 16.223. So this is going to include, um, essentially, the she was immensely charming because, yeah, it's a, basically we'd be going from here. Because you always start with, like, the f a sentence. You're not going to be taking intensely sympathetic. Um, 23 is going to take her down here or t to I encountered her with the very first words. Um, now, you did, you did use an S term sarcastic. Um, you know, you could make an argument, is this being sarcastic with reference to the use of things like pure and great grace? Um, certainly those terms we would kind of think to be respectful, you know, that Byron's mentioning. So there, there could be some arguments, I'd say, made for the sarcastic, and I'm not trying to force that idea certainly upon anyone. Um, but that might be a little bit more apt to what you're looking at than, than disdainful. Grace, were you going to throw in? Well, I was just going to agree with Byron because it's not, like, she definitely doesn't agree with the societal norms, but she, I think, respects the women in the position because, like, she's, like, praising her kind of. She's not agreeing There's with it, but she, like, respects Okay, so respectful of how the angel handles the unfortunate position that yeah. she is placed in. And Byron, is that where you yeah, coming I, with? I get that, like, the overall tone of the passage, the, the author doesn't like the angel mm -hmm. or thinks that it's unuseful to her. But, like, in line 16 to 23, there's nothing negative or, like, <coughs> I mean, it's, like, completely positive. She is amazing. Okay. So if you're isolating it to that, which with those with those questions, you you have to isolate it to it, and that's what can make those things kind of tricky. Lizzie and then Allie, we'll come to you. Okay. job citing your source. How about number 10? What's being asserted? Authority? Was that yours or is that Lindsay? Okay. That author's an authority? Dominance? Here come the questions. All right, so what you have, Finn, do, do this one on your own. So Allie's not going to worry about what Lindsay put for number five or eight or, or anything like that. Um, do this one on your own. Questions are the same. Now you do have answers. By all means, you can look at what we were putting down for the questions, you know, as, as, as context for them, um, and absolutely look at the passage. But you have the actual answers. Select one. Uh, it doesn't mean that every single question is going to be now easy and obvious. I think there's still going to be some tricky ones. But a lot of the stuff that you were coming up with before you even knew the answer options look pretty similar to the answers. Thank <laughs> you. 